Guys, my unicorn molted. Holy mackerel! Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. If you enjoy content related to keeping different species of arachnids such as tarantulas, scorpions, then please consider subscribing down below. And then don't forget to ding the notification bell afterwards so that you know when my next video is coming out. Now, in today's video, we are going to be going through my beautiful family of tarantulas and seeing who has molted. For those of you that don't know, arthropods are invertebrate animals, which means that they lack a vertebrae. And instead, these animals have what's called an exoskeleton. Exoskeletons keep the animal's shape, it protects their soft tissue from being damaged or attacked by a predator. However, for the animal to be able to grow, it actually has to shed the skeleton off and remove it so that it can come out in a new, rejuvenated, regenerated form. So for a young invertebrate to grow, it actually has to remove itself from the old skeleton because the new skeleton and body that is larger is pressing up against it and needs to come out of it so they can grow larger. Adult tarantulas do this as well, and technically they're growing ever so slightly every time, but molting is also a process used for things like regeneration. If the body is damaged in any way, the animal can molt and it can actually regenerate limbs, fangs, you name it. Anyways, you can expect that with a larger collection of tarantulas, you're gonna be getting several molts every few weeks, maybe even more often than that. And I was taking a look lately and noticed that in the last week or two, I've had quite a few molts. You know, they say there's like full moons and things like that and they cause different phenomena to happen uh, more frequently. I don't know if it was just like a warm spell or if it was raining, the humidity was up outside, but I got a lot of molts. I left most of them in with my spiders so that you guys can have a good look and we'll pick them out together in this video. So if you're down for that, we're gonna go ahead now and go through most of my tarantulas and pick out every molt we can find and it'll let you kind of see a few of the animals. My question of the day to you though is, have you ever found your tarantula mid-molt? Did it scare you the first time? A lot of people don't realize that these animals flip on their back and are laying motionless for quite a few hours before they actually come out of their skin, and that can be pretty scary. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've ever found your tarantula flipped up, or if you always just find them after the molt has happened. And I'll go ahead and give your comment a heart, and maybe we'll strike up a little conversation. All right, guys. This is my Pocilotheria rufolata, well, one of them that I own. And uh, yeah, I noticed this animal just recently molted, it looks like. So you can see there is the shed skin and the spider itself is further down. Uh, judging by this molt, the animal definitely needs a rehouse. They have probably grown a lot. Um, I actually just bought a bunch of containers that I'm going to be using to rehouse these guys. So that will be fun to do. It's down in there. So I was actually able to get a closer look of this tea. And lo and behold, it is a mature male Pocilotheria rufolata. So I'm going to need to see if I can find someone with a female out there and do a 50-50 or something. Because these are very rare animals now. So... Definitely want to make sure that Postolotheria as a genus um, continues to do well in the hobby and that we still have representation in captivity. Awesome. Alright guys, so this is an interesting enclosure. I actually have a mature male P. regalis here that is uh, on breeding loan with my female named Amara who actually recently molted. So I'm just going to gently... Go in here. I can't actually see if the molt is in there too. So if you actually look carefully, you can see her in here. And her molt is actually behind her. She's just an incredibly beautiful pokey. Um, but yeah, so Amara just molted as well. I'm not going to reach in there and try and get that molt out, but... Uh, yeah, we'll just let her kind of do her thing. 
I've noticed that the male's been tapping lots and they've actually been cohabiting for almost three months. So that's super cool as well. But uh, he's been tapping around and hanging out with her at night. So hopefully this will result in a sack at some point. That'd be super nice. Awesome. All right, guys. So the next spider here that molted is here. Honey, my male Postalotheria ornata. This guy molted once and he's huge and i need to get him out of here because oh my god he's just grown so much and this enclosure is way too small for him he's lightning fast um you can see his molt there uh you can kind of make it out oh, way better that way and here's the spider i don't know if i can i really don't want him bolting i need to put him into an, a new enclosure he literally is just lightning fast uh but yeah, you can see him there. He's just ridiculously fast. Yeah, um, handsome tarantula. I have a nice female named Kalani that he can hopefully reproduce with. Um, I just need to slow him down because honestly, next month, the dude's going to be mature by the looks of it. Crazy. Here we have a little Mexican red rump tarantula. Uh, this tiny little individual just molted. You can see the fangs and everything there. Pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. And it feels like yesterday that I rehoused them into this enclosure. It looks like they're going to need a new rehousing all over again. Craziness. All right, let's move on. The next tarantula molted here. Oh my goodness, not happy. Is my non dew Try Peppy, Strawberry Blonde. This is a male. I'm uh, just going to take that shed out. Now, disclaimer, be careful with molts, especially New World species. They still have all the irritating hairs on them, so you can't just stick that in your hand. It'll be super itchy to touch. Uh, but yeah, we don't want to stress this guy out because he's already throwing up a threat posture. He's looking pretty awesome. Maybe a molt or two and he'll be mature and who knows, we could try pairing him up with Strawberry Shortcake. All right, buddy, see you. All right, guys, this next tarantula here is Dorothy. She is my female Acanthoscaria geniculata, which is the Brazilian white-banded bird-eating tarantula. Uh, she molted about a week or two ago, and here is her molt. Uh, let's go ahead and give her a super worm. I'm sure she'd be happy to eat. But look at that beautiful animal. Man, she looks so good. They're honestly a must-have in every tarantula collection. They're just such incredible animals. All right. Okay, beautiful. You ready? Nice. <laughs> I think she's enthusiastic. What do you think? Look at that spider go. And see how long the legs got too. Really, really growing fast. She needs a rehousing soon. Well done, girl. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Poor superworm. Well done, girly. All right, well, while she's preoccupied with that, I think we should try to take that molt out of there because knowing her, we make too many things move. I'm just kind of putting the molts up here. If we make too many things move, she's coming for us. So I'm just gonna get the carapace, which is kind of interesting to see. Actually, you can see that. That's the carapace, and those are all the eyes there in the front. See all the little tarantula eyes? It's kind of neat to compare. If you look closely at the animal there, see that? They have a few eyes. I mean, that kind of looks interesting. It almost looks like they have an iris. I don't think their eyes are like that. That's just the way the light's hitting them. But yeah, they have several eyes. Most of them have eight, if I'm not mistaken. All right, very, very cool. Let's go ahead and move on. See you later, Dorothy. 
All right, guys, so the next spider we're gonna look at here is my male Brachypelma Bomi. His name is Tobasco. He just molted recently. Check this guy out. Looking pretty stellar, if I may say. He's a very nervous animal, so I don't want to screw around with him too much. We're just going to take the mold out. You can see it there. And the fangs should just be over here. Huh, they're not. Weird. Oh, they're probably folded in. Yeah. Let me remove the mold. Have a little look at this boy. He looks really nice. I don't know if he's going to be down for a super worm. We can try, but like I said, sometimes he really responds nervously to everything. And it's pretty annoying when he flicks. Okay. Well, that went great. <laughs> he always seems to respond nervously. And that's annoying when he kicks hairs. But I'm glad he was receptive to eat there. That was, that was pretty cool to see. <laughs> My mistake, buddy. He's like, what the heck's wrong with you? I was just wanting to eat. <laughs> All right, let's move on. All right, friends, so the next spider that molted is my Pocilotheria Miranda. This is one of my two slings, I just realized. Molted, so we'll take the molt out. Just get all that out before she gets spooked because she's in her burrow, which is convenient for us. And then we'll get the lid closed and that'll be it. But yeah, I'm really happy to have these. They kind of dropped off the face of the earth in the Canadian hobby. I know there's a few people that have females and hopefully some males. If not, hopefully one of mine is male and we can keep these guys going, but they're very, uh, I would say underappreciated postal etheria. So it's nice to have two. Wonderful. All right, guys, so here we have everybody's favorite tea unicorn, the Ceratogyrus marshalli, which is the straight horned baboon. Man, this girl molted and she got so dark. It's pretty epic, I gotta say. Over here is her molt. She moved it over and webbed it over, as you can see. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out. And then we'll offer a superworm. Maybe in the opposite order, just so that she stays nice. Because you all know how this girl behaves sometimes. She does not like anybody in her home. And, well, we're going to be in her home. So we don't need her throwing a hissy fit at us. Let's go ahead and give her a nice superworm to start. All right, unicorn. Here you go. Oh, wow, that is a pretty spider. Good girl. See, better that than us, right? <laughs> oh, man, I love this spider. She's so pretty. Look at that horn there on top of her carapace, too. It's incredible. She's quite the animal. Okay, well, now that that's been sorted, let's go up here and remove her molt. Nice and easy does it. See, I can see how tan she was before she molted. And there's the fangs. Really, really cool. But yeah, I don't know what it is. She got so dark this last molt. It's quite interesting. All right, girl. Well, we don't want to bug you too much. Well, guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. We got a decent amount of molts there out of the collection. And I'm sure there'll be many more to come soon as the weeks go by because with the warmer weather, I find that my teas grow a lot more quickly. So it'll be interesting to see how their growth goes. And I gotta say, I have a lot of rehouses that I need to do in the next few days. So probably expect some content pertaining to tarantula rehouses soon. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to thumbs up. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. And if you want to see more content related to tarantulas, click above to my tarantula playlist. Awesome.